What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Acre Scuba Marine. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor. Hit this little subscribe button up here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are gonna be notified every time we upload new content. Now we've had an entire series out on underwater salvage work and today's video is not gonna be any different. We've got another salvage job coming up and we're headed up here to Smith Mountain Lake up in Virginia. And we've got a recent new contract with a CETO company up here, or a franchise of CETO. And we're going up to help them with a cabin cruiser. Now, according to the pictures, and I'll flash the pictures up here for you, this should theoretically be a really easy job. All we've got to do is put a couple of 2,000-pound uh, bags on the back of this vessel, pop it up just to it's above the water, and then pump it out. And though I'm not a superstitious man, we still try to treat every job as if it's the most difficult job out there because sometimes what can happen is is we get very complacent when we have a really super easy job we will get complacent we won't set our gear up right or we won't take the right gear or the right equipment and then we kind of get stuck in a bind so anytime we do work even if it is just a textbook job a lot of times we kind of fall or we fail at that job because we're not properly prepared and that's what i want to talk about is being properly prepared when you're out here doing jobs like this all right guys, so we're gonna go ahead and jump right into this dive. And of course, we're gonna start with the pre-dive stage here. Um, I've talked about gearing up properly in other videos, but I've never really showed you just how much uh, time we take to gear up. Uh, on average, it takes anywhere between 20 to 30 minutes to get everything properly geared up, get our suits on, get our equipment good working order, and kind of get a game plan of how we're going to uh, actually do a salvage job. Uh, but I kind of wanted to show you this, guys, just to, you know basically how long it does take us to gear up. Remember, this is a recovery operation. This is not a rescue operation, so we do have all the time in the world to get ready. There's no need to rush it, and we're going to assist each other. We're going to do proper gear checks just like you were taught in your open water program um, and we do the same things you do but now that we're all geared up we're going to go ahead and walk down the hill here and make our entries and just like in other videos we always want to use the appropriate entry method for where we're at considering the fact that the back side of this dock is about 12 foot deep uh, and we can almost see the bottom we can see that there's no hazards then we went ahead and decided to do a giant stride here um, just kind of helps us out not having to kneel down to do a um, say a controlled seated entry or anything like that but now that we're in the water we're going to go ahead and do our um, survey of the vessel and typically we would swim all the way around it checking the bow the stern the sides look for holes things like that what we're actually looking at here is this is the port side up underneath the swim deck and you could kind of see me pointing there what I was actually pointing to is the stern eye or what some people call a trailer and eye the big uh, little brown spot you're looking there on the right that is one of the out drives and this vessel actually has two different out drives on it and just to the outside of each outdrive, there is a trailer and hook or a little trailer and eye there. Uh, and that's going to be our attachment points. We're actually going to put two lift bags, one on each trailer and eye. Go ahead and lift it up uh, or pump air into it and lift that stern up. And this does look like a relatively easy job. And like I said during the... Um, intro we want to make sure that even the easiest jobs we're following all the procedures that we should and we take every caution that we can not to damage a vessel and not to put it in a worse shape than what it already is so we're just going to make sure that we take our time get everything hooked up get
get the bags placed where they need to be. And I also talked a little bit about in the intro when it's sometimes the easiest jobs, we tend to get complacent and we think, well, this is going to be easy. We'll just drop down, hook up and lift up. And you're going to see very quickly that hooking up this bag up underneath that swim deck was a lot more difficult than, than you might think. We're only at about, say, six, seven foot of water here. But not only did I have to get all the way up underneath the um, the swim deck there, I had to kind of worm myself in between the ladder itself and the left stern drive there and kind of shimmy myself up into it just to rig up this bag. Now, this is a 4,000. Typically, we're going to use 2,000-pound bags. This is actually a 4,000-pound bag, and we're going to be putting two of them here on the stern. But you can imagine trying to manipulate this much larger bag and kind of crawl up underneath the swim deck here just to rig up everything you're going to see not only am i you know start out by laying on my side i'm going to have to go completely you know on my back so basically here in a minute i'm going to flip over on my back and i'm going to have to work up above me and you can see i'm already struggling a little bit trying to get the bag under there trying to get it on top of the stern drive and in between the ladder itself and to get to that hook there you can kind of see the hook where my hand is um, but once I get it attached, then of course we can move over and do the other one. But it's not as easy as, as it sounds a lot of times. Um, here I'm actually already flipped over on my back. I'm having to move one of my arms way up in there. And it seems like it would be easy. You just lay on your back and do it. But you got to remember, you're fully geared up. You're in a dry suit where air can shift. And that can manipulate where you're at and your body's position. Also, I have a tank on my back as well. So I'm not just on my back. I'm laying on a tank that it's being pressed up in the dirt and all this. So as you can see, what we would consider a very simple and easy job sometimes is far from it. It's typically a lot harder than than a, a normal job. Now, at the end of the video, I'll talk a little bit about this too, but I want to go ahead and address this. Why are we hooking to these um, stern eyes versus just bellying the system itself and lifting up the vessel? One, we don't necessarily have to get this vessel up as high as what we normally would uh, because the bow of it is sitting on the bottom and the bow is out of the water. So we just got to lift up the stern just enough to where we can pump. And another reason is considering the stern is on the bottom, there's no way to get the straps completely underneath it so we would still have to rig in a fashion like we're doing lift it up and then re-rig it with some type of belly system um, thankfully we didn't have to do that and the other reason is so close to the dock itself if we were to rig bags up completely underneath where they come all the way up on the gunnels to do the lift then of course it's going to catch on the dock as we do the lift so these stern knives right here are going to be our best attachment point and in all honesty that's all we need we just really need to lift this vessel up only about a foot maybe two foot max and then we can actually start pumping it out but you'll see uh, i'm back laid on my back here and camera probably ain't going to show you much because the back's laying on top of me but sometimes it's difficult and this is another reason a lot of people say why do you wear cave helmets you know that's for cave divers and yeah cave divers wear it but a lot of times we're up underneath stuff we hit our heads on stuff just like a cave diver could and so the helmets really come in handy not only to uh, keep our lights hands free it also gives us a place to mount our cameras uh, and it protects us as well so now that we got this bag we're going to go ahead and zoom forward a little bit we'll get the other bag hooked up real quick and then i'm going to go ahead and show you uh, the lifting phase of this too because I'm going to show you some of the extra things that we've got to do even once that vessel's up. It, just because we get the gunnels and the vents out of the water there's still a lot of extra things that we've got to do to make sure that we're pumping out water faster than what it's actually going in especially in a case of when we don't know what made the vessel sink we don't know where the water is coming in sometimes we got to make sure that we're able to pump out enough water than what the water is coming in um, in the event that we couldn't get it up high enough in general but we're going to go ahead and switch over to that footage real quick for you and show you exactly what we're going to do to the engine compartment to make it easier on us so now I'm standing up on the swim deck itself and I'm going to climb over into the engine bay. You can kind of see where the water's coming through the door. You can see the ripples there and the water's also coming up through the scupper holes. And even though we do have this vessel up high enough to start pumping, the water is still coming in a little bit faster in certain areas than what we're able to pump it out. So we're going to go ahead and close off those holes. And there is no exact science to this. Um, and you're going to see very quickly how we get these holes closed off. Uh, a simple pool noodle that's all it takes i'm gonna take this pool noodle i'm gonna cut me a couple little small chunks of it and i'm gonna shove them down in the um 
down in the scupper holes there. And what that allows, it basically just creates a waterproof seal. Uh, and it's not completely waterproof. Yeah, some water is still going to come in, but at nowhere near the rate that it's coming in now. And we have several pumps going, several two-inch pumps. We've got another one-inch pump going. Um, and so once we get these closed off and we get the doorway itself closed off, which here in a minute I'll show you how we do that. Once we get all this closed off, then, of course, we will uh, be very well off. We'll have this boat up in no time. But here you can see I'm taking the styrofoam, just shoving it down into the scupper hole there on the uh, starboard side. And of course, I'm going to put one over on the port side as well, just to close that off. And then the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to close this doorway off. And to do that, we're actually going to use differential pressure, sometimes known as delta P. And all I'm doing, or all that we're doing, is just taking a trash bag. And we're laying it up against the door on the um, lake side of it. And you can see it just completely shut off that flow of water. And sometimes everybody thinks Delta P is a bad thing, that it can be dangerous to you. And it, by all means, can be dangerous. Sometimes we use Delta P to our advantage. And in this case, it just simply just took a little trash bag to push up against the door. Uh, that trash bag, uh, the pressure held it to it. And, of course, uh, it sealed it off. Now, as you can see, we're pumping. It's starting to come up on its own now. And from here, we've pretty much got this one tackled out. And uh, we're going to go ahead and end the video here shortly for you. But I want to show you the difference of what it looked like there in the beginning to what it looks like as we start to pump it out. There you can see the vessel is completely floating on its own. And we're going to go ahead and start removing the bags. Now, I do want you to notice there was a little bit of damage to the swim deck. But sometimes that happens during salvage work. There you go guys, very easy, simple job, but it's usually the easiest and simple jobs that cause the most trouble. We had to get completely up underneath that swim platform to attach our bags, and I actually had to flip over on my back to actually attach one because my little old arms were too short to get in there. But you also saw a little bit of damage being done by the boat, and unfortunately, sometimes that just happens. The swim platform here actually broke off because the bags were up underneath it. And I know somebody's going to ask, well, why didn't you just belly band the, the stern of the vessel, put two bags, and lift it up from the bottom? And in short, we couldn't. The, the boat was actually sitting on the bottom, so we couldn't get bags underneath it. And our only attachment points, without damaging too much, were those stern eyes or those uh, trailer hooks there in the back. The other reason we didn't belly band it, even if we could have got something up underneath it, on the starboard side, the right side, that bag would have been up underneath the dock. So as it was coming up, it would just pick the dock up with it too. So our best option obviously were the stern eyes and you guys got to see sometimes it's difficult to get up, in in, up underneath the there to the actually hook ride. it up. But all in all, it was a great job. We were very successful. We knocked it out in about an hour and a half. Uh, the, the hardest and longest part was just driving up here to Virginia and We've got about a three and a half hour ride home, so we're going to hop off here. But if you liked the video, give me a big thumbs up. If you got any questions, put it down in the comment section below. I'll try to answer the questions the best I can. But as always, guys, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Like us on Facebook. Pin us on Pinterest. Subscribe to us here on YouTube. And as always, guys, we appreciate your business.